Hi, I'm Jack Hanlon. This video is an introduction to geometric algebra, which I think is the easiest way to understand the secret input power source for self-running switch reluctance generators. That's the title of my talk at the 2019 Energy Science and Technology Conference in Hayden, Idaho. If you are interested in that topic, you might want to browse through this video before the conference in July 2019. In this video, I'm going to describe a path from complex numbers to geometric algebra. Today, the path is straightforward, but the real path to discovery, taken by David Hestinez, the pioneer of this approach, took many fascinating twists and turns. You might want to browse his story of discovery at the link below. What looks easy now was anything but easy to do from scratch. In a way, his journey is much like ours. It's the familiar path of discovery. At first, nobody paid attention. Then, as the idea began to take shape, people started to realize he really has something special. Now the field of geometric algebra is exploding because it seems to add organization and new insights to every application it touches. Geometric algebra is a near-perfect blend of algebra and geometry. Hestinus puts it this way, Geometry without algebra is dumb. Algebra without geometry is blind. I think using geometric algebra to explain switch reluctance generators might be one of the most important applications of geometric algebra. If you are viewing this video, you probably already know that complex numbers can be written as z is equal to x plus iy. And even though a complex number is often shown as a vector pointing to a position in the complex plane, this is a vector picture without a corresponding vector equation. Notice that the expression z is equal to x plus iy is not a vector equation. There is no vectors. There are no vectors in the equation for z. The picture of a complex number and the equation that describe it are not consistent. This has been a 300-year mismatch that is so familiar to us that is hardly ever noticed. In about 1965, Hestinus must have seen this mismatch and took a bold step to correct it. From here on in the video, I'm going to describe my own path to my discovery of geometric algebra. It's surely not the discovery path Hestinus took. That was much more difficult. Here we go. Multiply both sides of the complex number z by a unit vector in the x direction. Call it sigma sub x hat. Now notice there is at least one vector in the equation, sigma sub x hat times x, which is the red vector along the x-axis in the picture. Then guess that sigma sub x hat times i is equal to sigma sub y hat. Now there are two vectors on the right-hand side of the equation. So the left-hand side of the equation must also be a vector. Now we have a vector equation that follows the rules for vector addition and matches the vector picture on the right. It looks like the 300-year mismatch is solved. We could follow through the arithmetic and learn how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide with this new approach. It turns out that you can do that, and all the things you can do with complex numbers, you can do with this algebra, and much more. If you want to learn more, send me an email, and I will send you the more complete but longer video I made for this talk. 
The geometric product is the main result from the development of geometric algebra. It will be very important for us. It gathers in many outliers in mathematics and clarifies, extends, and reorganizes many concepts in physics, mathematics, and engineering. For example, circular motion, complex numbers, quaternions, rotations, power, energy, work, relativity, Maxwell's equations, robotics, image analysis, transmission line theory, and so forth, all take on new meaning when expressed in geometric algebra. I think if Hestinus wanted to be remembered for only one thing, it would be writing down, clarifying, generalizing, and using the geometric product. There are three products in the geometric product. The first product on the left-hand side of the equation is a direct product of vectors. It does not appear in traditional vector analysis. It's called the geometric product of vectors. The, the pro first product on the right-hand side is the dot product of two vectors. It's a common vector product in vector analysis. It has the same meaning in geometric algebra that it does in conventional vector analysis. A dot B is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between A and B. It is a real number. The last term is called the wedge or outer product of vectors. It takes the place of the cross product in traditional vector analysis. It's needed to generalize the cross product, which is only valid in three dimensions. The outer product can be written as I times the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between the vectors A and B. When the dust clears, the geometric product is just a complex number written in the language of vectors. Of course, geometric algebra concepts apply to more than two dimensions, where we have a scalar, two vectors, and a bivector, which generalizes the cross product of vector analysis. The algebra describes the geometry of a plane called the I2 or I plane. Once you know how to manipulate the algebra, I2 squares to minus 1 and covers all the algebra of complex numbers, but now with geometry included. It's easy to generalize the pattern with the same vector-like notation, which is an important benefit of geometric algebra. You can go to higher and higher dimensions without needing to learn a whole new notation like you have to do in tensor analysis, quaternion algebra, or the algebra of differential forms. Many new insights have come from translating old theories into the language of geometric algebra. In 3D, the geometric algebra we have, in 3D geometric algebra, we have a scalar, three vectors, three bivectors, and a trivector. All the bivectors and trivector square to minus one and have direct geometric meaning. The vectors, of course, are the red arrows. The bivectors correspond to the planes, the x, x, y, and z planes. And the green sphere has the geometric meaning of the trivector. I think one of the first things Heston is and other physicists were excited about was there were eyes that squared to minus one all over the place. And they wondered what was the meaning of the eye that appeared so often in relativity and quantum mechanics. It has been a 50 plus year journey and there is still much to learn. The even part of 3D geometric algebra, that is the scalar and bivectors, form a subalgebra that is equivalent to quaternion algebra. Here's the big picture. Zero degree geometric algebra is the arithmetic of real numbers. 1D 
geometric algebra is the algebra and geometry of one direction. 2D geometric algebra is the algebra and geometry of a plane. 3D geometric algebra is the algebra and geometry of ordinary space. 4D geometric algebra is the algebra and geometry of relativity. 5D geometric algebra is a very useful way to express the algebra and geometry of 3D space because it introduces vectors for the origin and infinity, which are treated like all the other vectors in 3D space. The con formal concept is especially interesting because it enhances the algebra and geometry of a space two dimensions lower in the chain. Every geometric algebra space contains and extends the algebra and geometry of all the lower dimensional spaces, all with the same notation and arithmetic. You are probably saying, this all looks interesting, but why should I be interested in geometric algebra? And why is it a topic at an alternative energy conference? Here's why. Force, distance, and velocity are vectors. Force times displacement is work, and force times velocity is power. Typically, only the component of force in the direction of motion is considered to be important. But the force and direction, the force and direction and velocity vectors are not always in the same direction. The component of the force perpendicular to the displacement and velocity show up for the first time as new terms in the geometric product expressions for work and power. Work and power are complex numbers, not scalar numbers, as previously thought. It's amazing that these new terms have not been recognized before. They only show up when work and power are looked at from the point of view of geometric algebra, which has only been developed over the last 50 years or so. This may be the first time the importance of these new terms is recognized. At the 2019 Energy Science and Technology Conference, I will show how these new terms explain the missing input power for self-running switch reluctance machines. In switch reluctance generators, the new mechanical terms F wedge DS and F wedge V couple to the electrical reactive power Q that electrical engineers are familiar with in AC circuits. I believe geometric algebra provides the important link that cracks open the armor traditional science uses to discredit the possibility of over-unity self-running machines. Here are some switch reluctance generators that I will talk about at the Energy Science and Technology Conference. All these machines are claimed to operate over unity. It's claimed that the QEG and the Infinity Save machines can be looped, the ultimate, ultimate test of overunity. Once these machines are started with conventional power, some of their output is used as input to run the machine and the conventional input power source can be removed. Then the machine runs itself and, and has, in addition, significant output power in the tens of kilowatt range, which is, pretty, which is plenty of power to run a large American house. These are fantastic machines, almost too good to be true. But I believe all these machines can be explained using the geometric algebra principles described in the previous slides. Well, that's the promised review of geometric algebra. Thanks for viewing. Hope to see you at the Energy Science and Technology Conference in July.